<laughs> we already got texts coming in on the truckwreck.com text line. What for you is the biggest position of need on the text line from the 808? Biggest need is an effing heart. I feel you uh, for the 575 linebackers who could stop the run, especially in an RPO. And from the 817, biggest position of need, owner, GM, exec, VP. Okay. Uh, keep those coming. 877-881-1053. But yo, Blake, what are you looking at when we start looking at potential positions of need for your Cowboys and which one stands out most prominently? Yeah, so this conversation spurred. I was just listening throughout, reading, kind of going through my own head of like, the Cowboys on paper, all pros everywhere. Pro bowlers everywhere. I mean, the mo- most all pros of any team. Yeah, you you would think, okay, this, this team's set. 12 win seasons three years in a row. But weirdly enough, they're either getting old at positions or the guys that they drafted young aren't producing. So you have this awkward space of like, yeah, we got all these pro bowlers and all pros, but we got a lot of holes to fix. And I wouldn't say... There's one position I'll get to that is major, but the rest are just kind of like you want to get better, but it's not life or death if you don't. So my biggest position of need. I think you might be forgetting one, but I know what you're talking about. But I I think I know where you're going. My biggest position need is linebacker. And with linebacker, I know a lot of people have kind of talked about the the draft. I personally don't think there's a linebacker where you're going to be at a 24 or even really anywhere in the first round, maybe outside of one or two guys that have a first round grade. And then outside of that, I don't even think you want another young linebacker. Because what was the problem we had this year? Young linebackers, guys that weren't traditionally linebackers. So I think if you bring in another guy who is trying to learn the system, it it might be a little bit of a a similar situation. Now, would I love them to draft one in general? Yes. I don't know if I want to use first-round capital or even second-round capital on the guy. I would prefer there's a lot of good free agents name coming out, both of the Tampa Bay boys. You got Patrick Queen. You got some other guys that we can mention as well. So... I, I personally would. Yeah, address- but let, we're, don't don't focus on it as a draft circumstance. Right? I, I think like, linebacker. We're, yeah, we're just talking about the openings, right? How you go about addressing yep. those needs is your you know off season strategy. But where do you have needs? And I think rightfully so, linebacker is one of those places, right? Yep. Like it's absolutely something that you need. We talk about it a lot in modern football. You know, the phrase spine of the defense comes up where we're talking about defensive tackles, we're talking about safeties, and we're talking about linebackers. Now, of course. How much you pay for those types of things ends up being the question. But the fact of the matter is you do need linebacker help, right? Damone Clark uh, played decent, I guess. You know, like he was not, he was not, you know, an elite linebacker in that place. And he was your lead linebacker because Leighton Van Der Esch gets hurt. And DeMarvion Overshone, whatever development we might have seen from him, because he looked pretty good in um, training camp, that gets stifled when he gets hurt in training camp. And so... Now you have Marquise Bell, who is doing fantastic for an undersized safety playing linebacker and had a lot of aggression, and I mean, I can appreciate that. However, like, he did not have all of the things that are necessary in that linebacker position. I don't, even if you keep him there, it would be nice to have him as depth. You need someone who's going to be there, be able to run the defense nicely, and one of the things about Leighton Van Der Esch is there was a point in time where we weren't sure about him. He, you know, reassured a lot of people about his play and his ability. But then also, like, he has suffered quite a few injuries, particularly ones that pertain to his, like, neck and spine yep. I, and back or whatever. I, I I don't know. We haven't gotten any assurance that he will absolutely play football again. Yeah. And so uh, that is something that absolutely needs to be addressed because one of the things, again, for the Cowboys also, you've had many players that you've had coming off an injury that have gotten paid or whatever that you've made priorities in your system, and the next season they have not looked the way that you wanted them to. That that linebacking core could look a lot different. Brian and Bobby have both hinted at it quite often that Leighton might retire. Yeah. That's a possibility. So that's one linebacker gone. Um, Clark and Bell, we they might play linebacker again. They might go back to safety. They might. Well, put Demone Clark is a linebacker, but, he, but I mean, he was previously like your second linebacker yeah. as opposed to the guy, you know, you know, one of your two linebackers, obviously, but not yes. the one that you wanted to lean and on more often. So when you look at this linebacking group next year, I think it'll look a lot different. And then even Overshone, I love him, but we even saw him a little bit in the preseason and at Texas. He's he's a pass rusher sometimes as well. So it's not like he's your traditional middle linebacker gonna gonna be covering all over the field type of guy. So. It's interesting that I think there's a lot of points of needs. Linebacker is my biggest one where I'm like, you have to address it. You have to be aggressive in addressing that however you do that. Free agency, trade, draft, whatever. You have to fix that or this team will not go far. 
What's the second thing for you? I think we're probably on the same page of what the second biggest need for is on this Cowboys offseason. Well, we've got a lot of texts that have come in, um, and a few of them have hit one of the things that jumps to mind for me very quickly from the 682, the 972. 817 mentions a few of them, but they start with running back, and that's a place where it felt very obvious once they couldn't get a long-term deal done with Tony Pollard and they franchise tagged him. It felt like that was an acknowledgement that you're going to have him for this one more season and you're going to try and move on, right? As of right now for the 2024 season, the running backs that you have under contract are Malik Davis, Deuce Vaughn, Snoop Connor. Are you familiar with the Snoop <laughs> I, Connor? That sounds like a made-up name. But like okay. all, all due respect to that gentleman, I'm not familiar with your game. Uh, he is on a future reserve contract, mm-hmm. as is Malik Davis. Those guys are both on like future reserve contracts. Mm-hmm. And so like the one guy that you have like on a contract contract, I guess, because obviously the future reserve contracts – or what they are is Deuce Vaughn, and it did not. They did not feel comfortable having him yeah, like being, under fifty touches, like. right? And so, like you came into this past season with people having debates and questions on can Tony Pollard tote the rock and be yeah. the guy, the you know the, the he's never done single it. back, uh, you know, or the lead back or whatever. That's something that you need to address. And I'm of the opinion, general generally with the running game that you know running performance is not entirely and solely on the running back, right? Line, offensive line and scheme and all these things matter when we talk about running performance. It's one of the reasons why running back value has kind of come down. But you still need the guys, right? You still need the Jimmys and Joes. And right now, you do not have guys to do that. And you saw the ways in which, yes. At the you know at the bye week you had the game offense change and it leaned towards being an offense you know a passing offense which was good. However, it was all offense and it was, all of the low was put on the on the passing offense rather, and you did not have any any counterpunch any portion of running that felt good right. Like I guess you got to level a, a somewhat of level of average, and now even Tony Pollard I don't anticipate personally coming back. Yeah. I think you need to figure out. How do that's a need that you're going to need. You're going to need to address that some way, shape, or form because what you have as of right now is not very much at all. And I'll just I'll just tag team that, keep this one short and simple. I don't think this one's really a shock to anyone, but you need O line help. I, I think you you gotta get a different right tackle. I, I love Terrence Steele, but just off the injury, he's just just not what you expected. Had I think he had too many games where he was a liability. I mean I feel like that Eagles and Dolphins game you can make or that Eagles game particularly you can literally put it on him. What did he give up? Like three sacks, like eight pressures. Like he was awful. I, I think you have to upgrade that. And there's a lot of good ones out there. Like I said, free agency draft and all that stuff. So I think tackle on both sides. Tyron's in the last year of his contract. He's going to be a, a free agent coming up. Do you, do you, do you resign him? You got Chuma as your backup. Terrence still has. I it. think they also like, well, let's go, but you know, he's... but would you, would you feel confident starting him? I'm not certain. I haven't seen him enough. But like I, 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 as of right now, I guess the answer would have to be no, just because I haven't seen him enough. Both both tackles are uncertain. Tyron was great, but just age and contract stuff is more I'm talking about. Steel, I think you got to upgrade. And then also, well, Steel is your highest paid line or li- highest paid lineman or tackle rather, and <sighs> you have him. I mean, you still have him before you can even get to like a real potential out. You still have a couple seasons. Yeah. So it might it might be just right? where you have to but stick I it do, out with Steel. I do think the idea of and center Pre- preparing for the possibility of Tyron, I think, is something that you think about, um, um, and because you know left tackle is a place where I know that the thought was that uh, you know that Tyler Smith would be the left tackle of the future, but, but it seems awesome like they've gotten guard. comfortable putting him at left guard. I don't know if maybe you go and you look for a guard, yeah. and then slide uh, Tyler back out when that time comes. But center is absolutely something you need to look at, right? Uh, Tyler Bar- Biotish was cool. And Biotish has reached the end of that uh, that rookie contract. Like, like is he that was, something that you want to sign back, or is that somewhere where you'd like to go and I, get I like a cheap to up, young talent? I'd like to upgrade there. I'd like to upgrade there. I think he was cool for the value, and he wasn't, like, awful. It wasn't like, oh, we're out there. We're not going to be able, ever able to run the ball. He just wasn't anybody that put you over the top. And the Cowboys are trying to be over the top. They're trying to be a physical, nasty team. That's what they say they want. That's what we say they should be. And you can't do that when you don't have great middle-of-the-line play in your own lineman. So we've, we've hit it. We've hit um, linebacker, running back, center and tackle. I think we, we can say they're good on guard. What's the next position for me? I'm looking at the defensive side of the ball and then that big, the big boys over there. You're, you're thinking defensive tackle. Yeah, the, the tough part about it is you've invested a first-round pick in Mozzie Smith. Tough. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing the pot-committed thing, but defensive tackle is not a position where you expect – uh, immediate performance. The tough mm-hmm. part about it is you took him in the first round, though, right? Yep. And which is kind of an, an a tacit acknowledgement that you're expecting 
immediate performance, but there's still a possibility for growth and development. Am I certain that that growth and development hits? I'm not sure. Also, uh, Jonathan Hankins, who has been pretty good for you, uh, he and not he's a free agent. He's he's not getting younger either, right? Yeah. Like, and so I think that's yeah, that's absolutely something that you would like to address. I mean, he's 31, I guess. I don't I don't know how we view that age. That's kind of a weird place in in football, and we've seen guys play play longer, but. Yeah, it does see, feel like that's one of those places where you would like to have more help, especially with the fact that, you know, run stopping was an issue for you. But you've you've already invested in some ways there. And so it's like, do you double up there or do you try and hope that, that you get the some weird, development there? That is that is 100% where I'm at. It's like you still see it's a problem, but you've made an investment. Do you stand stand on business, stand on what you've done and kind of be like, I, we've made this investment. We need it to pay off. Or do you be like, hey. It didn't really work out. We need to invest, draft capital, trade, friendship, mm-hmm. whatever it is, and really sure this up. Because, like, that was a big issue was you had undersized linebackers. We've already mentioned that. But it made it worse because of the defensive tackle play not being what it was. Sure. So those guys are getting to the second level, and you have linebackers that can't shed blocks right. now getting absolutely dominated. And safeties because you and, also have safeties, safeties playing so in like, as well. Yeah. It made them look even worse than th- – not, not, not than they are, but – they put them in a bad decision, a bad uh, position, I should say, to they weren't able to succeed. Because even if you had maybe your starting linebackers and if you had the defensive tackle play that we just saw, they still wouldn't have looked great because of how our front our front four was playing. You, you know what the, the visual that came to mind for me is? Uh-huh. Tell me if I'm wild with this. I feel like Mozzie is like the edible where you're like, you take and you're like, all right, I got to wait for this to hit. <laughs> But it's been 30 minutes. Should I take another one? Should I right, take like, another one? I've already invested. I already bought money in it. So I want to spend more money. Right, right. And so like that's what that's what it feels like there. But no, this it's definitely something that I, it feels like you probably need to address. And from the 469, they said draft best available. That's stop picking. That's we. Thank you very much. Uh, the draft best available. Stop picking what's needed and stick to the board. Right now, we're not talking about the draft yeah, inherently. Yeah. We're just talking about the offseason. Yeah. Right. Some of these things you might address in free agency yeah. right. and then you, still go draft, you know, yeah. best available. But these are the places where we'll, we'll get to draft another to time. Yeah. This is absolutely the places that I think you need to address. I think those are the major ones. Uh, it does. I don't know. Do you real quick before we go? Do you feel like you need to address wide receiver? Because I feel like Michael Gallup is good as gone. Good, good as gone. Because uh, he isn't you, getting any younger. You can get some cap relief off of Michael Gallup. It's it's so weird to think about because they have so much talent, but there's honestly so many holes that are about to start well, popping up. Well, to be fair, right? Like this is every NFL team, yes, right? I, I understand. No that team is perfect. There is a natural feeling that this was a huge disappointment of the season, and so now it feels like, oh man, look at all the places. Every team has yep. holes. That they, it's a salary cap sport. This is how it works, yep. right? You yep. come to the offseason, there's always going to be yep. a position that you need to look at and maybe address. And I would say linebacker is the only life or death one. I think run, running back still. Running okay, back yeah. Okay, you got to get somebody back exactly. there. Exactly. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to get somebody back there. Right, as much as I understand. like, But there's you look over at the spot and there's no one yeah. there. And I mean, I, I'm, I say that with all due respect to Deuce Vaughn. Yeah. I love Deuce Vaughn, K-State, or Emo, all that. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like those are those are the things the, that come The rest, to me. you want to get better but to do you be feel, that playoff team. But it's not like, oh my God, if they roll this O-line back out there, we're never going to win another game. It's qu- more... Right. Question I had, though, is like, I feel like Michael Gallup probably gets cut yes. for the for the cap relief. And also, like, obviously the production was yes. not what you wanted to, right? If we start talking about his blocking with that money, it ends up being a bad look. <laughs> do you feel comfortable <laughs> if the status quo is as the status quo at wide receiver when you talk about CeeDee Lamb, Brandon Cooks, and then t- Tolbert, like, Tolbert stepping in as that third. And then uh, obviously Turpin getting some, some I, run there I, as well. I, I don't love it, but it's not your biggest position of need. So I'm like, I would love to upgrade it, but you have too many holes right now to be worrying about that. You have a bona fide wide receiver one in CeeDee Lamb and a very quality wide receiver two in Brandon Cooks and Tolbert. Maybe he comes into something and keeps getting better every year. So I think it is something that you want to look forward to maybe next year. But it's not something where I'm like, we got to spend all of our capital here. I think it's fourth or fifth on the pecking order.